So in the continuing uh, saga of trying to find real heroes in the accounting space I have with me today, Will Farnell of Farnell Clark and this very, very unusual firm. Come on, Will, tell me why you're unusual. Or tell rather, tell, tell me and the three listeners that are going to watch this, right? <laughs> Go on. Um, so, uh, so my background, I, uh, I worked with uh, PwC for a number of years as a, as a consultant, right. um, kind of always with the intention to, uh, to kind of set up my own firm right. uh, ultimately in the future. A uh, number of things meant that it happened before I had perhaps intended it to. Yeah. Um, so but that's uh, always the way, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I left PwC yeah. uh, about four years ago yeah. um, uh, and left a, a very reasonably well-paid uh, consultancy job very well in, paid, uh, in London, uh, PwC of course, yeah. um, to uh, to work with my 15 clients in my little practice in They weren't, uh, paying, in you in North they, North they weren't paying you anything at all, really? Not a lot, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, although uh, I worked at PwC, I didn't qualify as an accountant with right. PwC, yeah. um, so I qualified outside of practice, right. um, which uh, which meant that when I actually set the practice up, yeah. I didn't have any preconceptions yeah, about yeah, yeah. Uh, how the practice had to be run and the right. way things should be done. So, so, so you hadn't learned that you have to put on your suit of armour in the morning and greet everybody with, good morning, Sir Galahad, hello, Sir Lancelot. <laughs> no, yeah. absolutely wow. not. So uh, without the preconceptions, I could I could look at uh, what, what clients might yeah. want in terms of yeah. uh, the relationship. So the business was built around um, what I thought, rightly or wrongly, a client expectation might, right. might be. Right. Um, and uh, from very early on, I started looking at, at ways that we could uh, differentiate what we did. Um, it was four years ago, so the, the cloud space was uh, very much in its infancy, if it's still not, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, and I looked at a number of packages and kind of procrastinated a little bit. And uh, um, But all accountants too, because we have to... Think about that. Absolutely. So uh, two, think, years, two, years, well. two years ago, however, I, uh, uh, I took the decision to, uh, to, to give it a go uh, right. and started working with, uh, with cash flow. Um, as a practice, we've, we've grown very quickly. Right. Uh, so uh, we're running at about 230 or so clients now. Wow. Um, so from my 15, four years ago, it's, uh, it's, it's a reasonable, uh, uh, reasonable So basically challenge. you're picking them up at the rate of about one a week, aren't you? That, if you um, work out the math. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing, the last year has been particularly good. We're, we're averaging kind of 10, 10 clients a month at wow. the moment. Wow. So, uh, so the, the trajectory for you is going up, right? Absolutely. And yep. do you, is that because of the vertical markets that you're choosing to serve, you know, this, the, the creative types? Um, yeah, I think that uh, certainly um, kind of differentiating ourselves in terms of, of looking at a particular type, kind of right. client that, right. that we, we want to work with and we feel will value what we do differently, I think is, is okay. the important thing. Um, if we think about the accounting software option in, in its, uh, uh, as, a, as one indication, I mean, a lot of our, our creative sector clients use, use Mac. It right. kind of naturally follows. So uh, the traditional uh, software packages are limited in, in that market. Being web-based means that it's it kind of it's, it's a logical no fit. Yeah. Um, but uh, the fact that we work fixed fee arrangements, moving the uncertainty, I think is very important right. for uh, for firms going forward. Um, clients want clarity over what they're paying for. Sure. Um, and the value proposition now is is very different to what it used to be ten years ago in terms right. of what what accountants um, actually deliver now. Sure. Sure. Um, so so our focus is on looking at ways to automate the statutory compliance work, which frees us up to look at, at ways to, to add value to, to our clients. Right, okay. So that essentially what you're doing is you're using the software to um, deal with the commodity aspects of it as quickly and as easily as possible, leaving you to deal with the with what you look at as being the value add elements. Yeah. And, and so, take from there. So, so where, does, um, where does cash flow fit in there for you? Um, where, where really is the value add, I guess, on what I'm saying? So there's a number of different ways, really. I mean, uh, firstly, there's the standardisation for in terms of, of right. us as the accountants, the fact that at the end of the year, the vast majority of our clients are all using the same the same system. Right. So, so my staff know the software very well, the, the process, um, the support that we've given clients during the year because we're able to do that with it being online yep. um, means that any problems have been dealt with when never risen during the course of the year. Right. Um, we've been able to keep an eye on what the clients are doing so we have a clean set of data 
that we can use at the end of the year, which which means it's it's a straightforward process. Right. Um, the ability for us to be able to get to understand what our clients do by having access to the data right. means that we have an opportunity to say, have you thought about doing this? You're spending a lot of money on advertising. Where's your return? And so forth. And that's really where the value add comes in. Okay. And is that when you talk about being able to see what they're doing, is that through the the, the portal type thing? Yes. That, right. Yeah. So through, through Orbit, we have access to uh, to look at a very high level in terms of uh, uh, graphs showing turnover when a client last logged right. in, and that's a really interesting thing. So if we see a client hasn't logged in for three weeks, mm. one of two things is happening: either they're too busy and mm. they haven't had a chance to raise sales invoices, yeah. in which case we can contact them and say, yeah. "Do you need some help?" Um, or on the other hand, they haven't logged in because they haven't had to raise a sales invoice, yeah. and again, that's a problem. Right. Um, or there uh, might be a holiday. There could be, um, yeah. uh, in which case uh, uh, they're going to come back and they're going to be very busy and there may yeah. be ways that yeah. we, can, we can help them. But it's about having that visibility uh, and yeah. being able to proactively say, have you got a problem here and, right. and what can we do to, to help? Given, given what Orbit gives you, which is essentially a view of all the clients and their activity and so forth, have you been able to use the data that you see there as a way of starting to create benchmark Information that might be of value to to customers. What I'm thinking there is, you know, to, you know, average DSO perhaps, or you know, um, average billing levels, or what have you per particular client group. Or is that not um, something you've looked at so it's, far? It's not really something we've looked at. I mean, right. uh, uh, clearly there's, there's confidentiality issues around the data yeah. and, and things like that we'd have to consider. Um, but the more client we get using it, the more access we have, the better we're going to understand the nature of the, the sectors that our clients operate in, right. which is, is clearly going to generate value for, for all yeah. of our clients in that particular space. Right. Um, right. So we can begin to identify what's happening in a particular particular sector maybe. Right. So, uh, so clearly there, there is value there, although at the moment the, the growth that we're encountering, we there are lots of things that we'd love to be able to do. You're but, busy enough yeah, as it is. Yeah, kind of thing. Right. But the data is there absolutely to, to okay. begin to, to okay. And um, how, what's been the, the the client experience? Because you know, if if clients haven't used something before, generally it's relatively straightforward to get them to yep. to move on to something. Yep. And then the question comes, you know, is what they're doing any good anyway? Is is the data good? Yeah. What about getting clients who've used something else? I mean. Are you able to switch them into cash flow, or is that a difficult? Um, I, I think the benefit that that we have is the rate of growth we've got. So right. we get a new client come in, and we say, "This is part of the package that we're going to offer." Right. You. So uh, uh, we any new client that we come in, if we get them on a on a, a monthly retained deal, which is the way we like to work, um, we will provide them a cash flow license okay. package. Um, so it's a very easy option for us to just say we've got this software it's a, a really useful piece of software it's going to let you do x y and z uh, we're going to make that available to you as part of the package mm -hmm. so part of the growth that we've experienced with with cash flow is, is directly linked to the growth that we have as a firm right um, we have um, we have had clients that have switched from, from sage um, we've probably got a dozen or so of those that we've supported them with with imports and yeah that won't be difficult else um, so, uh, uh, and they've found it incredibly useful and it's also offered new opportunities for us. We've got clients that uh, traditionally might have done their own, uh, their own bookkeeping who we're now providing effectively an outsourced accounts mm. service for them. So exciting times for you. Absolutely, though. yeah, yeah indeed. I think there's, uh, there's lots of opportunities. I mean we've slightly restricted our opportunity for, uh, for, for value add sales. Right. We, we value add. But a lot of that is built into the fees that we charge. Okay. So we've slightly restricted our opportunity okay. to create value sales. At the moment. At the moment. Right. But the software provides us an opportunity to think about doing more bookkeeping work, which traditionally I'd have thought, actually, I'm not really that bothered about right. what I'm doing. Right. Um, but the fact that the client still has some ownership, because that's always been my issue with, with bookkeeping. Yeah, yeah. The client needs to understand their business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they just get somebody else to do all the bookkeeping, often they don't have that understanding. Being online gives us the opportunity to develop develop kind of hybrid packages and say, well, you can do your, your sales invoicing, we can do your bank reconciliation, right. whatever it is, um, and steer you towards the information we think is useful for you to understand what's, what's happening in your business.